Hi, I'm Amber Crooks, Environmental Policy Manager at the Conservancy of Southwest Florida. Today, I want to talk about the Florida Wildlife Corridor for the benefit of the Florida Panther. This is the Florida Panther, also known as Ghost Cat, Swamp Cougar, regulated to only about 5% of its historic range and whose core habitat falls now in Southwest Florida, like here, the Fakahatchee Strand. Arguably, the strand is the Amazon of North America, the heart of the Western Everglades, and it's only about a 30-minute drive from the current urban center of Naples. This here is the old logging tram where, after tons of early morning hikes and a lot of finger crossing, I saw my one and only panther, which is a pretty significant sighting for a population of only about 120 to 230 adults and subadults left in the wild. Once feared extinct and perhaps reaching a low of only about a dozen or so, Tale of the Panther is a long one and one that is still being written. In an ever repeating story, the natural, agricultural, and rural lands just outside of areas like the Fakahatchee, Florida Panther Refuge, Corkscrew Swamp, and the other crown jewels are threatened by continued intensification and land conversion, new roads, mines, and development that turn ranches and farms interspersed with habitat that support a multitude of flora and fauna, as well as regional large mammal corridors, into yet another cul-de-sac. This is the loss and fragmentation of the Florida Wildlife Corridor in real time. You can see here in the side-by-side -side comparison this development over time. On the left, you have 1984, and on the right, the year 2020. Since 1984, over 145,000 acres of Florida panther habitat has been permitted away. We know that by 2040, Florida's human population will reach over 26 million people, and by 2070, around 34 million people. In southwest Florida, our five-county area, we will add another 1.1 million people by 2070, essentially doubling our current population. Just six projects under consideration right now by the Florida Department of Environmental Protection would destroy another 8,000 acres of panther habitat and about 1,000 acres of wetlands, by the way, and would also add hundreds of thousands of vehicle trips onto already deadly roadways where already today, between 20 to 30 Florida panthers are already being struck and killed by vehicles each year, mostly in our Southwest Florida area. The red X marks on this map show those vehicle strikes to date. With the Southwest Florida region being at or close to carrying capacity for the Panther with absolutely no capacity to lose, our task is to secure that base, the habitat, while solidifying the lifelines to other areas that can provide the space ultimately necessary for a full recovery. The first order or tier of those linkages are within Southwest Florida essentially to link Eastern Collier and Hendry County to places like Babcock and Fish Eating Creek. In 2016, against all odds, the wildlife agencies confirmed the first female panthers north of the Caloosahatchee River since the 1970s, 40 years in the making. So absolutely a huge milestone. Yet everything is always two steps forward, one step back, as just a few months ago, two of those known females north of the river were killed by vehicles in Glades County. However, one thing that this tells us is that females, um, you know, north of the Caloosahatchee River and into South Central Florida is possible. We know that males, male panthers, as far north as Georgia are possible. And we know that the science shows two more populations of at least 240 panthers each are needed to achieve recovery. And that the best areas to support those populations, those the areas that you see here on the map with green and blue, they need that Florida Wildlife Corridor to link them. Because natural exchange of individuals and their genetics is absolutely essential for recovery. What we need now is a resolve to ensure that as Florida continues to develop, that we are forward-looking and making the decisions and commitments to provide safe passage across this landscape. Build it and they will come. We don't have another 40 years. So just sit back and hope for the best. This map here 
shows the currently protected lands in light green. And in the dark green, you see the Florida Wildlife Corridor, which again is our best shot to get the uh, protected Florida panther linkages that we need from Southwest Florida to up and over the I-4 area in, you see here on red, Interstate 4. So you, what you see here is my colleague and I donning a hard hat and a safety vest. We've stepped just moments before this picture was taken onto the sand where bears and panthers might also leave their footprints in the future. This here is a large wildlife crossing structure that was under construction near Disney World of all places on Interstate 4. Planning ahead for large wildlife to be moving through this area. This crossing location you see here at the yellow star represents just one of the limited spots where wildlife have any hope of safe passage across this major roadway barrier of, of Interstate 4. And I just want to point out that this was a map from a study done by the Panther Recovery Implementation Team Transportation Subteam, who I was honored to serve with for many years. And this subteam produced a report, you see the citation here, and they found that only about five areas along I-4 remained with some chance of permeability, if we act now. But coming back to Southwest Florida, can the bears and panthers from the Everglades ecosystem even reliably get there? In Southwest Florida, there are already many roadkill hotspots that they would first need to traverse. Some of these spots you can see here on the map uh, in red, orange, green, and blue. Some of them are um, already being uh, assessed and being considered for undercrass, underpass crossings to allow wildlife to cross under the road and to avoid traffic but some of these hotspots don't have any current plans for resolution. I just want to point out as well that this is another map from the transportation sub team. And this report is actually updated annually, and it's intended to show the worst of the worst roadkill road segments. And additionally, we have this third report that could be very helpful, just being finalized uh, um, in December of 2022. Again, thanks to the work of the sub team and Dr. Dan Smith. And with this report, we, we also have a good idea of the likely route that the Panthers would take once they have crossed through those hotspots and made their way north of the Clusatchee River. Now, most of the data that we've used for the hotspots report that you just saw was from actual Panthers being hit by vehicles. But because we don't have that many Panthers north of the Clusatchee River, there aren't a lot of data points. And there are very few colored panthers. So this model, the fleece cross pathway model, actually takes what we know about the panthers, land cover, and land selection preferences to help predict the likely preferred pathways. And as you can see here in purple, in many ways, in many respects, those least cross pathways follow the Florida Wildlife Corridor. These three reports by the transportation sub team can complement the plethora of information that we already have by many experts that have been studying wildlife corridor and greenway needs for already the better part of three decades. But we're very proud of these sub team reports and they are available on our Conservancy webpage, conservancy.org. For us and for anybody that's working on protection of the corridor, we have our work cut out for us and we have a couple of suggestions. First, we feel we would like to triage the key purchases and easements that would be needed to protect the specific corridors and crossing um, needs within the Panthers' current range, current range here in Southwest Florida. Particularly if those purchases are going to allow local or state transportation entities to want to invest in a wildlife crossing. For example, we have areas that are hotspots, deadly hotspots, where there is conservation land on one side of the road, but not the other. And so to advance any type of wildlife cr crossing structure, um, it's much more advantageous if we're able to secure land on both sides. That would be a first set of priorities. Then we will want to do the work to prioritize those purchases and easements that would connect Southwest Florida through uh, South Central Florida all the way up to those very specific areas along I-4 where there are some permeability options. 
And it's not just the future of the Florida Panther that, that depends on these investments and choices, but also, as you can see here, there's a critical connection that needs to be made between the imperiled subpopulation of Florida black bears in Glades and Highland counties to the larger big cypress bear population. The Glades Highlands subpopulation of black bear is not viable in the long term. It may be in decline, and there may be only about 100 bears in this area. And so by securing a corridor that would allow genetic flow between these two subpopulations of black bear, we may help fight against the local extirpation of bears in the Glades Highlands area. We have so much at stake in making a secured Florida wildlife corridor a reality, not just for bears and panthers, but a place for recreation and watershed protection, green infrastructure that can help shield us when the next storm hits, and a literal and metaphorical connection to wild Florida. So while we fight to protect our rural and natural places from the immense and intense pressure of development, I'm optimistic about this momentum to highlight the need of Florida's wildlife. And it comes at the right and necessary time, watershed moment, when time is of the essence and the connections that will determine the future of Florida's wildlife, namely the panther, could be foreclosed on in the short term. The handful of development projects I mentioned, they may be decided in the next year. And the tight margins to secure the corridor through a rapidly growing central Florida is simultaneously dwindling. What happens next has the potential to seal their fates or, alternatively, the opportunity to preserve and recover Florida's wildlife. Thank you.